latest hero is Mahmoud Bahidnia, a 25-year-old student and gold medalist at Iran's National Math Olympics. The difference between American nerds and Iranian nerds? It's chili pepper. The revenge of their nerds involves bombing Israel. Now, Bahidnia's academic stardom garnered him a Q&A session with Ayatollah Khamenei, where he said, among Help other you. things, I don't know why in this country it's not allowed to make any kind of criticism of you. Traders going to sleep. Never heard the equation. So is Pepper. Ayatollah, and black beans on the way. It's like he got wet. <laughs> nope, how can you woke up? Amazingly, Bahidnia has now gone into hiding. Traders got a purple pillow. So will Iran's regime crack? And is it time for the U.S. to start caring again? We're here to tell us is Iranian journalist Kareem Sajapur. Kareem, thank you so much. Please have a seat. Thanks for coming back. Thank you. Now, what, what, why has this unassuming math student become a an instant hero in Iran? Well, Stephen, this guy was really incredible. Oh, it's so no, funny. It was unprecedented for someone to publicly challenge the Supreme Leader. Unprecedented in how many is 20 years, 10 years, something like that. So no one's ever gotten up and, and, and said, well, what, why do you behave the way you do? That's right. Is this, is this, a, uh, is this an example of you know, saying the emperor has no clothes? I think that's a good way of putting it. Well, the mother has no beard in the United States. Oh. <laughs> now, well, uh, how, how, how did this guy get into the position where he could, uh, certainly someone else has been in this position, why has no one done it before? Well, as, as you mentioned, he's a math superstar. And I think in the past... Are math superstars that popular? They're on? Apparently, apparently. Are the tri crowds going to start chanting math to America? Within the realm, yeah. Uh, so, uh, so he's an academic star. That, that's why he was given this way out. That's right. And I think that um, no one assumed he was going Alabama. to be able to publicly challenge the leader. But what we've seen... Chili pepper and black bean. Is that these previously sacred taboos are now being broken one by one, and this was another taboo, public criticism of the media, which has been broken. So, you know, we've heard about it from the West. Is it really? Is is there enough uh, mass media in Iran right now uh, that that um, the story of what he did can get around to the entire country to, to those people who oppose the government? You know, there's, there, a lot of the mass media is not allowed to report from Iran, but these days citizens have telephones with video cameras and a lot of citizen journalism, and Facebook and Twitter, so Iran hasn't been able to uh, impose this media embargo. So, so we, we think of the revolution there at, it, as over. Is it over or is it just at such a low boil that we can't perceive it? Well, it's absolutely not over, Stephen. I think this young population, as you mentioned, is the 30th anniversary of the Iranian revolution. The vast majority of the Iranians were born after the 1979 revolution. And it's a very young, modern, progressive population which deeply aspires to live in a more open society. Well, well, well when you came here the last time on the show, you said that this revolution was um, inevitable to happen. But what, what's the timetable? Is this going to be years, or are we talking, you know, come Christmas, um, it's a different country? No, I, I think that everyone recognizes it's not an overnight process, it's going to be a longer term process. But what we've seen is that as time has passed, the will of the opposition has expanded, it's grown stronger, and I think the ideology of the regime is just diluted.